Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about one leg in Microsoft Fabric. We are going to discuss what is one leg, what are the different features of it, what are the different functionality of it, and why do we actually use it. So let's move ahead in the video, but do remember to connect with me on the LinkedIn as well as on Instagram, and I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So let's move ahead. So when we talk about Microsoft Fabric One Lake, right? It is nothing but it is a unified logical data lake designed for enterprise wide usage, right? It is, if you look at One Lake, it is nothing but it's just an ADLS Gen 2, right? But what is unique with Microsoft Fabric? That is what we need to understand. Microsoft Fabric is unified logical data lake. So understand this term unified logical data lake designed for enterprise wide usage which is provided as a SaaS, and it is included in every microsoft fabric tenant and a single repository for the data analytics or for analytics data right so essentially what is happening here is one leg is your adls trend too so all your data enterprise level data would just reside in one lake without the data copy and data movement so if your operations team is working on a set of data your it team is working on a set of data your marketing team is working on a set of data they don't need to copy the data all the data can actually reside in one lake itself and as per the requirement the team can go ahead and use it so you don't need multiple copies of the data because that essentially goes and creates different data silos in an organization now it is removing those data silos it is removing the need to do the data movement it is removing the need to do the data copy across the organization but instead what is happening all the enterprise data is actually residing in one leg okay if you are from it operations if you are from um, you know marketing you can go ahead access the same one leg you can access the same data without the need to copy it or without the need to do any kind of data movement that is what microsoft fabric one leg is all about right and Remember that this Microsoft Fabric One Lake, right? It provides a well-defined governance and compliance framework that is managed at the tenant level. So in an organization, you have a tenant, right? Now, within a tenant, you have these workspaces, the fabric workspaces that we have discussed in the previous video. Within the tenant, you have the fabric workspaces. And within the fabric workspaces and all the fabric workspaces, the data will reside within one lake, right? And any governance or any compliance or any policy that you need to set around the data you can actually set it around the tenant level itself so what will happen is if you have the you know multiple teams working across the world let's say a team is working in europe a team is working on singapore what they will do is they will use the same data lake for the storage but it is still governed and compliant because we are doing it at the tenant level. Those options are actually provided at the tenant level. Now, similarly, different teams, because of this, what can happen? Different teams can work in different workspaces, right? All the different teams within your organization can create their own workspaces. They can work in their own workspaces and even where to share the data, they can define the access policies and controls for the workspace itself. So if I am working in workspace A and the other team is working in workspace B, I can define what access control I need to put. I can define which compute or capacity I'm going to use. I can define that, right? So essentially the whole organization is using just one piece of data, right? What will now? This is a very big thing because the teams in the different countries can actually collaborate. But even when they are collaborating together using the same one leg data lake, they can still comply to their local regulations. If there is a regulation in Singapore, they can still comply to the regulations in Singapore before sharing any data. So this is uh, this is the main feature of the Microsoft Fabric One Lake, and remember, it can handle all types of file, be it structured or unstructured, and it is compatible with the same APIs and SDKs as ADLS Gen Two. Right? It is compatible with the same set of APIs and SDKs as ADLS Gen Two, so it is even more easier. So each workspace that we work on so we have already seen in our previous videos right so this is nothing but this is the microsoft 
uh, fabric right so now if i go to workspace so this is my workspace like that you can have multiple workspaces each team can work in their own workspace marketing team can work in their own workspace you know and even the policies the data policies can be defined the access control can actually be defined at this workspace level and at the tenant level itself right but underlining it is using same data right it is underlining not copying the data so if i'm if i'm from the marketing team and i need the data from the operations team i don't need to copy the data from operations team into uh, you know any one location where i can access no that's not needed so let me go back to the ppt over here so this is how uh, it works and each workspace acts like a container in the storage account imagine your one lake is a storage account adls gen 2 and each workspace right that we have seen just now it acts like a container and inside that workspace you can create multiple data flows different items you can do over there and if you have to get anything from the microsoft fabric workspace right it simply it is as simple as you do it from your adls gen 2 as well you just provide this whole path right https one leg dbfs dot microsoft uh, dot fabric dot microsoft dot com your workspace name right so your workspace name is nothing it, it acts like a container and then the item and the item type and similarly if you want to upload anything if you want to uh, you know check what are the different workspaces you can use the file explorer over here you can go ahead download it we are going to see it in our next videos as well this file explorer will help you to go and check the workspaces uh, you know that you have to upload anything to download anything so this file explorer it's open and free you can go ahead and download it we are going to uh, you know see this in detail in the next video as well so when you talk about microsoft fabric one lake right another very important feature is uh, as i already told first thing is it helps to eliminate the data movement and duplication right and it provides one more feature which is called a shortcut now what does the shortcut will do right so imagine you have this workspace a and this workspace b right the people in workspace a they want to access the data from workspace b they don't need to copy the data and store it right they don't need to do any kind of data movement what they will do they will create a shortcut they will create a shortcut of let's say service telemetry anything inside it they will create a shortcut and this shortcut actually acts like a pointer to the data which is located in the workspace b it will just act as a pointer to the data you know it is not doing any data movement but it is it, the shortcut that you have created it acts like a pointer to the data located in your workspace b now this is workspace to workspace right now if you say that i have some data in my azure and some data in my s3 bucket right now even that collaboration has been made effortlessly seamless right so here if you see uh, even for the amazon s3 bucket you can actually go ahead and create a shortcut again you don't need to copy the data from s3 bucket into one leg no you don't need to do that you just need to create a shortcut and whenever you want to access the data from amazon s3 you can go ahead and access the data right and the shortcut is acting like a pointer so now if you see from one cloud to another again you're not doing any data movement you are just creating a shortcut which is a pointer to the data right and at the same time it has one more very good feature which is it uses caching it uses caching to bring data closer to wherever compute engine is going to be using it so for example you have uh, amazon s3 bucket right you have a pointer to that now it the fabric will also fabric one leg will also use caching right because when you are taking in the data when you are um, egressing the data from s3 bucket right there is a egress cost which is involved which we have seen in the microsoft fabric pricing video right there is a egress cost which is involved so caching will bring the data closer to let's say you are trying to put a spark query right now this caching will help to bring the data closer to spark compute engine right and help it will help in reducing the egress cost by using the caching mechanism right and hence you do not need to replicate the data into your own environment and then use it so it is also helping you to reduce the egress cost and similarly you don't need to replicate the data with a particular compute engine right so if you see the serverless compute over here t sql spark kql analysis service for the power bi 
you can use any of these computes on top of your one rig, right? For Spark, you do not need to replicate the data, you know, with your Spark compute engine. You don't need to do that. So uh, if you look at the serverless compute, it does not care whether you have a Parquet file or you have a, you know, a Delta table. If you have a CSV, it can work seamlessly. So if you have data science team, right? They, they want to use Spark or they want to use T-SQL. They can use Spark or T-SQL both on the same subset of the data. On the same data set, they can use both these two compute engines to query or to transform their data. Right? This is how important Microsoft Fabric is. And even before Microsoft Fabric, the data was actually in silos, right? So when I say that marketing team was using some, you know, uh, their own version of the data, you know, operations team was using their own version of data, but essentially there was a data copy, right? And there was a lot of data movement. So now here, one lake is giving you one storage that, okay, I have given you one storage. This is where I'm going to store my data. All my organization's data is going to get stored here. Different team can create their own workspace, right? And then they can start working on the data over there. If they want to share the data, they can, you know, the other team can go ahead and create the shortcuts. I will, you know, uh, one lake will still be, uh, will still have compliance and governance in place, even if you are working from the different regions. And it definitely helps, uh, you know, to bring the data closure to wherever your compute engine is using the caching mechanism as well. Well, so this is what your Microsoft Fabric One Lake is about. You're going to understand it as we proceed, you know, through the series one by one. So I hope you like this particular video. Do remember to watch all the videos in sequence because that is when it is going to make you more sense, right? So thank you so much for being till here. But do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel.